What's up, everybody? And I hope you can all hear me okay. We should have some background music today. So um, let me know if it's too loud or too quiet or whatever's happening. How are you all doing today? Yeah, I always open with this song. I like this one. <laughs> it's my, uh, it's part of my dev playlist. So, uh, so all good. Um, what are we up to today? So this is our first I think I have a schedule picture. We're actually, we're going to revisit Parrot because I haven't used Parrot in like, I don't know how many years, maybe, uh, hold on, I'm just turning my headphones down a bit because otherwise I can't hear myself think. Music's too loud for me. Um, I haven't used Parrot in like, I don't know, maybe five years, four or five years or something like this. So this is what I think we're going to do today. We're going to do this. Uh, uh, I don't know, if all goes horribly wrong, we might have to switch back to um, to Kali or, or one of my other VMs. But uh, yeah, we're going to do a classic Hack the Box machine, which is one of my uh, favorite Hack the Box machines. So uh, so we'll see. Oh yeah, the, um, the sound output might be a little bit behind. Let me change that because it's set up for a different camera. So maybe I'm a little bit more in time with uh, the lip sync now. All right, how are you all doing? Hello, hello. I was really dancing. <laughs> nice. One day it's going to cut and I'm not going to realize the music thing and I'm going to be doing something like really strange or weird on, on cam and um, you guys will all see it as the intro to one of the videos. That or a cat will be attacking me or something. So, uh, so, so yeah. Oh, the beard needs to make a return. Yeah, it, it grows quite fast, so... Um, so, you know, it won't be too long. I think I saw one or two um, two questions already. So let me let me scroll back up. Hey, what's up, Andrew? How are you doing? Um, do I remember my first web app exploit in the wild? Yes, it was SQL injection. And how old was I? I was thirteen or fourteen. And now I'm 33, so that must have been 2003, 2004, something like this. It was about 20 years ago. But actually what happened was, was somebody else hacked my website with SQL injection, but then showed me how to do it and how to fix it. And then I looked for the same issue elsewhere, and then I found, you know, SQL injection on my own, on my own site. So, so that was my first, I suppose, you know, um, real taste of, of exploitation or, or, or web hacking, really. And from that, um, there was a um, website called Hack This Site. Let me see if it's still up. Let me switch to my... Um... Yeah, when I was a teenager, I spent quite a bit of time on this website. And this was um, kind of like my first... Uh, first introduction to hacking and uh, 
There's a lot of random stuff on here, so um, some interesting challenges. It's super old now. Yeah, hackthesite.org. This is uh, this is a fun one. So, so yeah, that was uh, that's the story of how I got into security, I suppose, very early on. And what else do we have? I was, did see. Uh, what do I prefer? PMPT or ENPT? Uh, what's the ENPT? What is this? <laughs> um, I don't hold either of those certifications, but I'm going to go with PMPT because I know it's good. So that's the uh, that's the safe bet, and I know it's useful, and I know it's lots of Active Directory. Which Active Directory is, is seriously, if you want to be a pen tester, like Active Directory, knowing Active Directory is like if you want to be a web app pen tester, you need to know about injection. That's like the fundamentals. If you want to be a network pen tester. You need to know about Active Directory. There's no excuse. It's like your your bread and butter. So, uh, so yeah. Um, oh, lots of these comparison questions today. Okay, EJPT or CH? Uh, I wouldn't go for CH personally, unless unless it's really good in your country or or your particular industry. I'd just avoid EC Council. Don't give them any more money than than uh, than they've already got. They're a terrible organization. Well, they're not. Maybe they're not terrible people, but they're not very good for the. Uh, for the information security industry as a whole, in my opinion. So, um, uh, this is a cool question. Okay, so out of all the bug bounty platforms out there, which one is suited for beginners, in my opinion? Which is which is key because this is my opinion. Um, I'll be honest. I've only used two. Um, I used Hacker One maybe two or three years ago uh, for for a little bit just to dabble. And I recently I spent a little bit of time on integrity, and so I found a cool bug on Friday actually, which is uh, which was nice. But I'll um, maybe I'll do a blog post once it's all like cleared and gone through the system and stuff. But it got accepted, which is nice. Um, yeah, I think integrity is quite good. Uh, there's lots of different programs on there, and uh, if you're just starting out, maybe go for um, some targets that are reasonably big, but uh, have um, just have like responsible disclosure because uh, there'll be less people kind of looking at them or something like this. I think that's a good place to uh, good place to start. But I don't know about like uh, there's like Bug Crowd and a bunch of others, but I've I've never used those, so so I don't really know. Um... Interesting question here. So are more cyber jobs coming back to the office? I keep hearing about this tech jobs in general. Probably yes, but it depends on where you are in the world and also depends on a lot of other things like your industry. If you're working in like banking, for example, they probably want you in the office. But if you work for a tech company, they might be like, hey, you know, you can work from Iceland. I'd love to work from Iceland. And, uh, you know, chill out in up some mountains somewhere. The internet's probably not very fast from out there though. But, um, but yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Why do I feel like I'm from Germany? I'm not from Germany. I'm from the UK. So um, it's because my twin, Live Overflow, he's from Germany. So um, he's, uh, you know, much smarter than me and has a cool accent. So. All right, let me let me keep going down. I'm paid. Am I paid to? Am I though? I'm not paid to say anything. <laughs> That's not true. It's not true. Oh, this is a fantastic question. So, is hacking glorified QA? Well, to be honest, there's nothing wrong with QA to begin with. Um, I think uh, like good QA engineers are actually quite hard to find uh, personally, and I think that it's kind of an, it's kind of a the QA industry as a whole is in a bit of a weird space. But um, I think like vulnerability assessments and automation do have some ties into like, you know, um, how you would approach QA. But I don't think generally speaking, if you're doing pen testing or if you're doing, um, uh, if you're testing for more than like CVEs and things like this, then I don't think it's it's like, as you described, glorified QA. 
So, so I, in my mind, there's like a few different types of testers. Some people will automate a lot of things. There's no right or wrong way to test. Some people will automate a bunch of things, run a ton of scans, um, you know, automate filtering out false positives, and then look for things like XSS and Swagger UI and CVEs that, that already exist and, and do things like that. And I think that is kind of like a similar approach to QA. But if you're looking for things like um, broken function level authorization or, or business log logic issues, or if you're chaining vulnerabilities together, which are you know quite difficult, or you're working with you know complex technology stacks, and you know maybe you've got like 10,000 API endpoints or the microservices. I mean, imagine testing. Hold on, let me let me Google a picture for you. Um, uh, here we are. I think this is um, Netflix's microservice architecture. Imagine pen testing that. That's that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be difficult. So like I, I don't I don't think uh, you know all the time, but I think you know there are there are some similarities. TLDR. This is my my opinion. So. Um, when will my course become free? Uh, so I don't think my course has ever been free, not the um, not the API one, but we're moving to a subscription model. So if you just subscribe, you get access to everything. So you're all good if that, um, if that happens. And then when am I going to do PMPT? It's on my list, but you know, I'm, I'm a really busy person. <laughs> this is my excuse. So I, I will do it at some point for sure, probably this year. Um, I think in Q4 because um, I kind of don't want to say what I'm doing on stream because that's going to hold me accountable. But I'm looking um, I'm looking like at the Hack the Box certifications at the moment, doing a bit of Port Swigger as well and some other stuff. And also building like CTFs and, um, and working full time and uh, looking after my cats. That, that keeps me very busy. So, uh, you know. And uh, since... Uh, since New Year, I kind of like, I don't really touch the PC on Sundays. I try and take one day off away from my computer because I spend like 12 hours a day in front of my computer. So Sundays I try and like, you know, go outside. <laughs> um, coffee versus tea. Andrew, the good questions, the, the really important questions in life. Uh, depends on the time of day, but why not both? Most days I will have coffee and tea at the same time on my desk. So, uh, but I usually have like a, like an espresso or a slightly long espresso and then a big cup of tea. So um, both, I think. So um, how to find people as driven as me? I feel like lots of people are driven. It's just they need to be in a situation where they can they have the freedom to take like responsibility of their work and, and you know, some creative freedom and things like this. But I, I, I've worked with a lot of people who are, you know, really, really hardworking people and really love the field. So um, I don't know. There's lots of us out there. We just like like our job, I suppose. That's um, um, this is. <laughs> can you rate the difficulty of OSCP out of ten for intermediates? Uh, so like, if you're an intermediate hacker, so let's say. You have like pro hacker on hack the box. Uh, maybe you're in like top five percent try hack me or something like this. Maybe you have two or three years experience. That's kind of where like maybe I see an intermediate um, practitioner. Uh, for an intermediate person, I would say like four if you prep well, eight if you don't do any prep at all or if you don't work hard. And two, if you really like really prep well, if that makes sense. Passing the OSCP is all about good preparation. Um, so do everything in the public lab and then do lots of um, proving grounds boxes and you'll be fine. It's, uh, it's not too tricky once you've done, you know, you'll start seeing patterns and similar, similar things as you, as you do more boxes. So, um, All right, so I'm a couple of minutes behind in the chat. I'm down at um, 07 and the time is 13 minutes past. So I'm about five minutes behind. So let me keep scrolling down. 
Yes, the uh, they all have subtitles. So uh, I don't know about other languages, but they definitely all have them in English. So um, so yeah, you should be all good with that. Beginner in scarcity domain is CH good to start with? I mean, so realistically, like you can just get the book, study your CEH for like a week, and then and then pass the exam. It's not that difficult. So, and if you get that on your CV, that is useful. So I'm not going to say that having CH is going to work against you. It won't. But um, I wouldn't expect to have CH and then walk into like a, a pen test role, for example. Um, you might walk into like a junior role where they're expected to train and mentor you, but it doesn't really give you the technical skills. So, so yeah, I mean, it's a certification and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's, um, it is really bare bones. So... I went to Northumbria University, up um, just on the border of Scotland, basically, up in Newcastle. So um, yeah, it was pretty fun. Had a good time. I love the north of England. People are nice. It's um, it's a bit quieter than, than down here, <laughs> down in the south, near London. Um, do, 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 do. What machine are we going to? That's a secret. I'm going to... but. If you guys want to, you can you can guess. This is one of my favorite boxes, and it's I, I'm going to cl classify it as a classic. So it's within like the first fifty or or hundred boxes uh, that was released on Try uh, Hack the Box. Let me keep scrolling down. See what other questions we have. Oh, that's an interesting one. Okay, so I'm thinking of doing a master's in cybersecurity in Germany. Will that be a good decision? Probably yes, as long as uh, as long as you can afford it, and um, you know it's not going to put you in like a massive hole financially. Uh, I don't see any bad thing coming out of that. So, and having a degree in cybersecurity, I think, is probably worth something for sure. I, I still think like they're still kind of catching up, but um, but yeah. Oh, good question. So any advice for testing out-of-band SQLi and uh, out-of-band XSS without Burp Suite Pro? Yes, I use this site um, called webhook.site. I mean, personally, uh, I would just spin up a free tier AWS instance. Now, the thing is, if you're doing the Port Swigger Labs, um, the problem you're going to have is, is they're not allowed to call out to these, um, to these sites, but... Uh, but yeah, basically what you do here is you you just go to webhook.site and then it gives you this unique URL. So you just copy to this to the clipboard. And then if I just open up the terminal, oh, this is because <laughs> we're in parrots. When I curl it, you can see these requests. So you can obviously use this um, this your unique uh, address to to do things like steal cookies with XSS or or make calls. Um, uh, however, however you want to. So, so yeah, that's what I would I would recommend. I, I realize the font is really small. I'm going to make that bigger before uh, once we start the stream. So once we start like the hands-on section. Look at this! Look at this peer pressure. <laughs> Everybody wants me to take PMPT. Yeah, I will. I will do. I will do at some point. Maybe I'm going to take because PMPT is what five days plus two reporting. The hack the box bug bounty set is also seven days. So maybe I just take a week off work and like try and crush both at the same time. That'd be fun. Yeah, so um, I'm glad somebody remembered from last week. So I, I still have a lot of work to do on it, but um, my wiki is is available now. So what I've been doing is I've been taking my notes and kind of like putting them into uh, like sections. So it kind of gives you like an introduction so you can come down. But most importantly, I suppose, are like the random thoughts that I have when I'm checking or when I'm looking for vulnerabilities. So I've kind of started to put together these checklists and then, you know, basic um, exploitation. And then you can go into like 
JavaScript injection or cross-site scripting, and like you have a checklist here and some basic things. So there's still a lot of work to do on it, but um, I hope that you guys uh, all find this super helpful. And it's kind of a work in progress. So I'm going to put it, um, let me put the link into, um, into the chat and you're all welcome to, um, yeah, feel free to ping me and give me some give me some feedback and, and, and things like this. Cause it's gonna be like my, my goal is to make like a living um uh you know like the web application hackers handbook, like a living document of that basically. That's my my long term goal. We've still got a lot to do, but um but yeah. Um do, 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 do. All right, a few more questions. Oh, interesting question. Uh, so do you guys work in red teaming or web application certifications? Uh, both, really. So we've got stuff in the works. But I personally, I work on web app stuff because that's like, you know, that's the best. <laughs> so <laughs> only cool people work on uh, on web application security. But um, but yeah, we, we have we have all sorts of content. So and and from different authors. So obviously, people with different experience can can input. Um, how can one manage uh, effectively manage their time when learning multiple complex subjects? Yeah, this is tricky. I would say don't try and learn too much all at once. I've done this in the past a bunch of times. So I've tried to learn everything, and it's it doesn't really work that well. But um, I would say just block your days or, or block your time so that like. You know, if you're doing one hour study or one hour of dev work, you're only doing dev work. You're not looking into like AV bypasses or, or something else or, or some other thing. Try and be like, um, you know, that you have like flow states where you're you're just focused on one task. When you're learning, I think being focused on one task and not being distracted is, is really powerful. So either separate your subjects by day or separate them by blocks so that you're not trying to learn like three things within the same 10 minute span. That's what I would, um, that's what I would say. All right. Um, do, 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 do. How to become an expert? I have a video on this. Okay. <laughs> but TLDR, do lots of port swigger labs. Um, then do lots of pen tester labs, and then just do lots of hacking, and then you're good. It's just it's just time. Uh, that's it, really. To be honest, that's just enjoy it enjoy the journey and um you know rome wasn't built in a day it takes just takes us a long time and, and i still have tons of stuff to learn and you know and in 10 years i'll be much more experienced than i am today um when we see a full oh i can't give you an exact date but it's um it's in the works for sure it's in the works all right, let me keep coming down. How advanced is OSWE? So I have gone through the course contents, but I didn't sit the exam yet. But I do have two very close friends who um, uh, who have both passed this exam. Uh, I would say it's quite advanced, I think. Uh, if you like code review, then it's, it's going to be awesome. Um, I did like the exam, uh, sorry, not the exam. I did like the learning materials. Uh, I didn't like the fact that it was a lot of Java, because I just hate Java. <laughs> Um, Java kind of blows my mind, but um, but yeah, I think it's um, it's pretty good. Oh, you watched the fifteen? Yeah, if you did the full fifteen hours, then uh, maybe look at the PH PMPT exam. That's probably a good place to go. Or check out some of the boxes on um, Try Hack Me and Hack the Box. You should have a good foundation for starting those boxes now. So that's uh, it's the best thing to move on to. This is a good question. I've randomly completed many boxes, and so I say I'm above intermediate. What should I do now? Um, focus on the pro labs and networks that are available. So, honestly, like just doing single machines only takes you really so far. Um, there's also a whole skill set in pivoting, doing analysis across lots of machines, 
Um, and if you can, getting some pen test experience. The first time you do a pen test where you've got like 10,000 hosts, it's a real um, it's a real learning experience. So try and look for uh, networks to practice on rather than single boxes. I would say is a good uh, is a good next step. Oh, my mouse has just just died. Oh, there we go. It's back again. <laughs> Um, this is an interesting question. Should we start hunting for bugs by learning three or four vulnerabilities, or we should keep learning advanced things up to more than 10? Uh, I think you should just start whenever you feel like you're ready. If you want to start by, like, you know, if you have three or four uh, things that you know how to test for, like maybe IDOR and SQL injection and cross-site scripting, yeah, go and test for them for sure. Because, um, you're going to start developing your methodology and you're going to start seeing like how web applications behave and then just just add to that over time um so i think yeah don't don't like hold back and feel like you need to learn everything before you can start you don't just yeah go for it all right uh... Five more minutes of questions, then we'll we'll do this box. Uh, if you have a checklist of vulns to hunt, what would they be? Uh, at the top, broken authorization on authentication. Uh, basically, whenever I start looking at something, I always look at how does it handle sessions? What does the login look like? Um, are there JSON web tokens? Um, is there any kind of like privilege escalation? How are the access controls checked? Authentication authorization takes up a big part of my testing. Uh, other than that, business logic issues, uh, because a lot of people look for things like cross-site scripting and SQL injection, and you can fuzz for these things quite quite easily, especially at scale. So I would look more at what makes the application unique, um, what unique code is there, um, and then I would target that to, to see whether I can do some interesting things. So that's basically... Yeah basically how I approach it. And then, you know, I can start looking at other stuff depending on what I find along the way and how the application behaves. Uh, what are the good machines for a good setup? You just need like a working laptop. I would say a decent amount of RAM is always nice. Um, and having, a, you know, having a powerful computer helps, but like just you know, just run Kali VM and then you're basically good to do, uh, good to go. I have this, uh, <laughs> I got a new ultra wide. So I've got my ultra wide monitor and then I've got two horizontal monitors and then I've got a laptop over here as well. And it's like, yeah, I have this crazy setup, but I don't actually need it. It doesn't make me better at my job. It's just, I, you know, I spend 10, 12 hours a day standing here. So I like to make it nice. All right. Um, so just a heads up, this is in, this will be recorded on YouTube. So if you just go to the YouTube channel and go to um, the live tab, in fact, I can I can show you quickly. Uh, where are we? Click on Heath and then come over to live. You'll be able to see the recordings here. So if you want to, you can see oh, look, there's me looking a bit strange in the uh, in the clip, but all good. What is GQ, Zach? I don't know. I don't know what GQ is. Um, two million. Ah, we're not doing two million today. Something older than two million. Way older than two million. Don't forget to connect to the VPN. <laughs> yeah, I need to download the VPN file. Actually, that's going to take me a minute. So, let me start doing that because. Um, we're on a brand new machine because um, I thought I would, you know, just revisit um, Parrot, see how it's looking these days, and I thought it'd be fun, a fun thing to do. So let me um, let me come over to hack the box, and while that's happening, I'll sign myself in. The business CTF registration is open. Did that last year. I think I only solved like two challenges though. I was quite busy. That's my excuse. I was quite busy. 
All right, spawn this machine and where's my access? My God, how do I download my VPN file these days? One thing about Hackerbox is the UI is just, I don't know. I feel like I'm being slapped in the face with UI all the time, but it's okay. The boxes are good and that's what counts. Where's my VPN file? It's going to be embarrassing if I just can't find the VPN file on stream. Maybe if I click starting point. Nope. Oh, connect. There we go. The top right. That was obvious. Uh, machines. Open VPN. Download. Okay, we good. We good. That was difficult. That was um, that was a real test. Of, um... All right. So, how do I open the file explorer in Parrots? Let's go into file management. No, that's not what I wanted. Is it Nautilus? No, it's not Nautilus. System services. Guys, this is gonna be. Dodgy, isn't it? What's this? Fluma text editor. Let me come to the desktop. Here we go. All right. So we'll come in here and then let's paste this. Oops. Didn't paste. Can't paste. Okay. I'll open it in Notepad instead. And Notepad. Oh, let me switch to um, so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just getting my VPN sorted. Then hackbox.o VPN inserts paste. Ah, oh, there we go. Like magic. Okay, we're good. We've got a, a VPN file. And then we'll just sudo open VPN. All right, we're good. How do we do new tabs? Yeah, control shift T. Nice. All right, I like Parrot already. This is um, This is good. Um, all right, so let me come down. Do, 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 do. Did I study law or at least read them before doing bug bounties? Uh, I kind of like skim the rules. I just stay in scope and then everything's fine, I think. You know, just don't go crazy. All right, so I'm quite far behind on questions. So I'm back to like 22 minutes. <laughs> I could just see through. Java sucks. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't like Java. I'm not sure if it's terrible. Maybe it's just me or, or us, but, um, but you know. All right, so let's, what we're going to do first is let's scan the box. So I think I have an IP address somewhere. Oh, it says creating instance still. So let's uh, let's give that a refresh. There we go. And let's see if we can ping it. And while we're doing this, I'm just going to try and um, make the text bigger because I realized that this box isn't really set up for streaming yet. So how do we make the text bigger? There it is. So... Let's go up to 20 and just do sounds regular. Oh, that's big. What is this? That's weirdly spaced. Is that because of the font I chose? This sounds regular font. Let's, um, let's change that again. What was it before? Monospace regular. OK, let's try that. Monospace. Monospace regular. And let's go down to 18, select, close. There we go, that's better. Okay, we're good. All right, so hopefully you can all see um, see everything okay. And I can see the chat now, so we're all good. Oh, does control shift plus? Ah, yeah, control shift plus works. Yeah, this is a pro tip. Uh, so let's ping 10, 10, 10, 13. 
And if you know the uh, the box just just from that, then then kudos to you. And let's just make a directory come into here, and then let's end map. Let's just do dash a. Uh, can we do top ports? Top ports. Let's just do twenty ports. Oh, I actually want to do uh, output normal scan dot initial. Let's see. Let's see how we get on. We'll give this a minute to scan, and uh, and then I'll answer some more some more questions and stuff. So, ooh, why is it telling us all of these are closed? Usually, the closed stuff is omitted, but maybe it's because we did top twenty. It's like listing everything that it scanned, so we know. So yeah, we have um, FTP is closed, SSH is open. That's not surprising. So 7.2 patch two, is that patch two? I'm not sure. And then Tana SMTP, 53 is open. A little bit strange, this is on TCP. So this, this is uh, an indicator that you should do a specific attack or a, a attempt a, a specific attack. Um, so if you know what we're gonna do with this, then um, props to you. And if you if you don't know, we'll we'll go through it. So don't worry. Uh, and then we have eighty open. So HTTP, and then uh, yeah, we have this. So let's check out what's running on HTTP first. Oh, default page. Okay. So we have a choice here. Every time I see a default page, I think we could do one of two things. We could either fuzz it for subdirectories, or um, what we could do is we could add the what we think is the host name into our etc host file, and then browse to it again. So let's try sudo vim etc hosts, add the IP address into our host file, and then we just do. Um, chronos.htb because that's the name of the box. And let's try going to chronos.htb and http colon slash slash. And we get a website. Hey presto, we're, we're all good. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, so we're doing chronos. So this this is actually one of my favorite boxes, and it's uh, it's pretty nostalgic. And it's it's I think it's a really good box. It's definitely like in my top ten. So um, so I hope uh, I hope you haven't seen it before, because <laughs> then then we have some fun stuff to be doing. Um, let me answer this question. So why am I struggling to get my first bug and duplicate? I get overwhelmed by the size of the application. Yeah, I mean, just focus on like critical functionality. Don't don't worry about the whole application because you're not doing, if you're doing bug bounty, you're not doing a pen test. It's not your job to test the entire application. If you're doing a pen test, yes, you have to test everything. But doing bug bounty, just choose small parts of the application and break it down. So choose like, you know, the account update page test that. Can you update other user accounts? Can you inject, you know, XSS or, or do you have SQL injection when you update your accounts? Is there a profile picture, you know? And so just, just worry about smaller parts of the application. So, um, ah, uh, yeah, you guys are on it. So Andrew and we are getting dumber and silver tyrant and, uh, and Kimmy, you guys are, are all on, uh, all on point. So we will, um, We'll consult the wiki because I can't remember how to do the uh, the zone transfer off the top of my head. Let me actually swap my camera to the top, and then you can see the um, see this here as well. So let's do fuff with this just to um, uh, actually, yeah, let's put this over here. Let's do fuff with this and see if we can find any directories. So dash u, and then we're just gonna fuzz, and then word list. Now, does anybody know where the word lists are on, on parrots? Are they in opt? Nope. Uh, user share. Oh, 440 possibilities. I don't want to go through that. Oh, yeah, word lists. Here we go. Uh, OK, we're good. Yeah, we've got deb. OK. So let's do deb. And let's just do common for now. And I think we should be OK. We don't want to add any extensions for the time being. Oof. It doesn't like, why is it doing that? 
that's kind of an ugly output. <laughs> it's not what I was expecting. Let me run it again. There we go. OK. I think the line wrap on this, um, on this terminal is not great. But, uh, so we've got web config, server status, robots.txt. Let's have a quick look in robots.txt. Ooh, not found. Why is that then? So you can, let's try curl, um, HTTP slash slash chronos. Did I typo something? That's very strange. So it doesn't like the browser, but it does like um, fuff and curl. It's a bit strange. Uh, let's try, I'm probably doing something wrong. Let's, uh, that's probably what's happening. We have this web config. So imported rule one, stop processing, match this regex, request file name is directory. This is just for redirects by the looks of it. Nothing, oh yeah, I need to rewrite. So, okay, nothing too exciting in there. Um, let's do, let's take a look at the uh, zone transfer and see what we can find. So what I'm going to do is, did I close it? Where's my, um, where's it gone? Oh, the wiki's gone. OK, so let's go to AppSec Explained. And then I think I added, if we come down to Content Discovery, and then DNS. Oh, there we go, Zone Transfers. Basic notes on Zone Transfers. So we can just dig AXFR at IP and the domain. So let's give this a try. And the music stopped. So let me um, let me fix that. Let's go back to my favorite song. I'll turn it up a bit in my headphones as well. So oops. Uh, stop HTB. And see what it comes up with. And we get some subdomains, which is nice. So admin, ns1, dub, dub, dub. And uh, yeah, that's quite useful to know. Let me see. I'm just going to catch up with the uh, with the chat. Ah, user share with us. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. Oh, I've got typos. Oh, no, everybody's saying typo. Uh-oh. Did I write TX instead of TXT? Oh yeah, I did. I was just I was just testing you guys. I'm just making sure that I don't have like 200 bots watching. And <laughs> yeah. So the um the box name is ChronoS, by the way. Just uh just a heads up. All right, I have to scroll down through a uh, a thing. Uh, did I use Mid Journey? So actually, not for that one. I used uh, Lenza, but I do I do have a bunch of others that I um, that Mid Journey made. So um, so yeah, just random pictures of me and orange jumpers. So uh, so yeah, Mid Journey is great though. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, you will pass the test. You're all human. It's like um, it's like a live capture where you have to select the motorbikes, except you have to spot the mistake in in my. Uh, in my hacking, so. All right, so let's update this file. So let's take, admin looks spicy, so let's go with this. So sudo vim etc hosts, and all we need to do to add this is just append. So we can just do like this. And then I think there was another, we'll just add chronos.htd. I'm always skeptical of typing because I'm probably gonna typo. What else was there? I think that, oh, there was ns one chronos.htd. So let's see what we can find. I'm just going to copy. Actually, no, let's just go get rid of the robots and go admin. Oh, we get a login page. Let's take a quick look at the other pages as well. Whoops, without robots.txt. No. Wait, what did I do there? <laughs> this is not my day. Okay, 
That looks fine. Um, are there any others? Nah, I think we'll stick with, with admin. So there's a few things. Actually, I should do this. I should add this to the um, uh, to the wiki, like what to do when you see a login page, because I kind of have like my own methodology of, of testing in that I'll test a bunch of things. Um, I mean, if it's like a CMS and I know the version, then I probably wouldn't test everything. You know, if I'm trying to log into WordPress, I know that up-to-date WordPress is not vulnerable to SQL injection, at least not on the login form. You might have some crazy plugin that is, but... Um, so I would test default credentials, especially if you're on a pen test and you're on the internal network, default credentials works so often. Um, I would test injection, but I'd probably just do basic tests. When you see something really janky like this and really old though, like this like random CSS, it's like, ah, oh, maybe this is an old application, so maybe it's vulnerable. Um, and then, yeah, you could then move on to things like brute forcing and, and trying like custom word lists, but that kind of like is a little bit more situational. So, so first up, let's just try admin admin. And your login and username is wrong. So let's try admin 1345. Nope. And we could take a quick look at the source code as well. Um, so if there's like a version or like a, um, uh, this is like, I don't know, mini CMS 1.3 or something like that. You usually can find it in um, in the source code, especially for older applications. So usually I take a little look uh, in there. And <laughs> my cat's just batting against the door. Um, other things I would test for is just basic SQL injection. So we'll just do admin or one equals one, dash, dash, space, dash. So um, let me zoom in a bit so you guys can see. So our typical SQL query might say something like select all or select username from um, users where username equals the given username and password equals the given password. And I usually like to inject here so that we can just basically um, cut out the rest of the statement so we don't have to mess around with passwords and mess around with like making everything work nicely after the and statement. So let's try this. <laughs> and of course it worked. Okay, that's that's it. That's that's how you hack websites. You just just all one equals one is the the only payload you need. Um, this works more often than not. So um, get the big boy SQL map. Yeah, I could show you this quickly in SQL map actually. Um, but what we'll need to do is I'm going to do it with the I'll do it with the request. So let me show you uh, SQL map. Recently though, actually, I found. Um, I'm going to try and do like a, a write-up or some kind of blog post on situations where SQL map gives you, um, says something's not injectable, but it is injectable and how to kind of like test in those situations. Because twice recently within the last month, SQL map has not found results, but I've managed to uh, exploit something manually. So where is, um, where's Web Suite? Where are you, Web Suite? I wonder if we can actually just do this with, um, Let's just do this with the dev tools. So if we come in here and we come to network and we hit reload and then we go admin or one equals one like this. And then where's our request? Actually, no, I didn't want to log in. Come back. Let's just go ASD, ASD. All right, so uh, can I see everything? Headers? I want to just be able to copy and paste the request. Copy all? No, that's not what I wanted. Let's get rid of this. Uh, I was really hoping we could just like, oh, uh, here we are. Copy as curl, copy request headers. Let's just copy as curl. And then if I paste in here, ah, oh, it's so ugly. Oh my God. Why is this, why is this so difficult? Where's my burp suite? Um, I don't think Web Suite's working for some reason. 
load, please. That's not what I wanted. This is the downside to testing on a on a brand new VM when you you don't know how anything works. Is um, I'm just going to be troubleshooting lots of random stuff because it's Vim. It's not, no, Vim's not the difficult bit. I just want to copy this request as like a, as a request. That's that's all. Uh, Let's just copy request headers. Okay, this is what I wanted. And then we can just copy the uh, the data as well. We're good, we're good. I figured it out in the end. You know, in my in my YouTube video next week, I, I talk about a bunch of different tools and I talk about how good the, um, the developer tools are and like how good Firebug is. But there is me here struggling on stream to just like copy a request. That's kind of sad, isn't it? Oh well, never mind. We're good. Um, and then all we're going to do is SQL map dash r request.txt. So this is the easiest way to get SQL map running if you can actually get the request running uh, in the first place. So nano, no, I don't use nano. Nano's nano's creepy with its shortcuts. It's kind of like I don't like it. <laughs> I did use it for a while, but. Uh, all right, so warning post parameter username does not appear to be dynamic. So, okay, right. We've just proved this is a great, I'm glad this happened, right? So we've just proved this is injectable with SQL injection, but we throw it into SQL map and SQL maps like, hey, I mean, okay, basic tests, but basic tests show that post parameter username might not be injectable. So, you know, SQL maps not infallible. Uh, not by any means. Um, so, is recommended uh, recommended to only perform basic union tests if there's not at least one. Do you want to reduce the number of requests? No, let's go with lots of requests and see whether I can actually find uh, the injection. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't like it. So there we go. SQL map is. Um, not always perfect. I mean, it is a good tool, don't get me wrong. It's super useful, especially if you want to test lots and lots of endpoints or uh, lots and lots of parameters very quickly. Um, it can definitely pick things up, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't always work. So, all right, so let's come back to here. So we have our command injection. And if we come to the wiki, I think I did some notes on command injection already. So if we come under injection, come under command injection, and then scroll down. Yeah, we just have some basic payloads in here. And when you find a like an endpoint or like a um, an endpoint or like a parameter that you think might be um, might be injectable, um, you can like try and just follow this this checklist. So try and figure out what's the technology stack because that's going to give you an indication of what payloads to use. Um, you want to identify, you know, injection points. So maybe URL parameters, maybe form fields, could be headers, and then test for simple stuff, test for blind command injection, um, try to escape from restriction mechanisms, um, trying with different um, functions that will execute code because especially with like PHP applications, sometimes system will work, but sometimes it won't work. Sometimes exec will work or sometimes proc will work or popen. You've got loads of different ways to actually execute code within PHP. And depending on the configuration of the server, um, you're not gonna be able to, you are or aren't gonna be able to use different ones. So, so yeah, you can take a look through and hopefully this will just spark some thoughts uh, as you're testing. So that if you're kind of stuck, you'll be like, oh yeah, maybe I should try this and then, then maybe you'll be successful. But I'm going to breathe now. <laughs> um, let's see, we have this uh, little semicolon, and then we'll just try this who am I and see, see what comes back. Uh, this is a good question. Yeah, I think Joe's spot on. Like basic SQL payload does work on bug bouncy, but honestly, it's kind of rare to find. So, you know, and it's not guaranteed that it's going to work all the time. But you've got to know like the um, 
uh, you all know the fundamentals, right? And then build on that. And then I think the thing that I say quite a lot is uh, try and learn how web applications behave. So when your basic payloads don't work, or when the application behaves in a bit of an odd way, you kind of got, have some intuition whether you want to go further or whether you just be like, ah, I fuzzed it, it failed gracefully, perfectly, responded in the right way, I'll just move on. So, you know, but you'd be surprised how often you find basic things. Um, it's just web applications are complex and some things are overlooked. Um, I found a cool bug in an application once. Um, I got template injection, basically where um, it did all the filtering on like special characters when uh, on all of your inputs. So when you signed up an account, on your username, um, on your profile information, but it was linked to some other social media platform. And if you created an account on that social media platform and created like your basic payload, which is like, you know, curly brace seven times seven curly brace as your username on the social media platform, use that to log in that bypassed the filter and then you got template injection and that that payload is like the most basic template injection payload but i found a weird place to put it in if that makes sense so you've got to find those situations where like you know things happen oh everybody says increase the level okay what's the max level is it like five let's go with three because somebody said increase the level I don't really, I know like level two, like injects into like cookie parameters and things like this, rather than just like the body data. But I, I don't know the exact difference between the levels in SQL map. Um, if somebody has a good resource on that, please feel free to share it in the chat. But even now it's taking longer than me just testing. Um, do you want to reduce the number of requests? No. I want SQL map to work because I, I like the tool. So, all right, we got dub 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 data. So <laughs> I got sidetracked, but um, yeah, we have we have uh, command injection here. So nice and simple. Um, let's have a look at what's in that file. Uh, what am I doing? Config.php. Uh, username admin. Maybe. Uh, Maybe this is password reuse. So every time I see a password, I think, where can I potentially reuse this password? Um, so maybe like dev test, SSH, uh, any of the accounts on the, um, against any of the accounts on the system. So etc passwd. So we might try against like Nullis. And yeah, maybe just Nullis. I can't see any. Everybody else is like no login. All the others are just like demons. So yeah, every time you see a password like this, definitely worth kind of giving it a try everywhere else. But ooh, everything's going funny. Document expired. Um, but since we've got command injection here, we're just going to try and pop a shell basically. So. So let's try and see if we can get a reverse shell. Oh, why is SQL mapping your machine working so fast? I don't mind, so it's okay. Even when I'm streaming, it's not it's not too crazy. So oops. Sorry, I clicked the wrong one. Uh, it's a sneeze box. I think it's rate, rated as uh, medium, but personally, I think it's I think it's quite easy. Like everything in it is kind of like fundamental stuff. So, in my opinion, I think it's slightly over, like higher than it should be. All right, so we'll come down here, and we we'll just come down to the reverse shell cheat sheet. And uh, let's go bash TCP. We could also do things like on here. Uh, if you like, have a look, let's see what like Python's on the box. So maybe we can do that or which netcat. Maybe we can just do netcat back to us. In fact, let's try that quickly. Wow. Yeah, so level three. 
SQL map still doesn't seem to be picking it up. So if we have time, we'll come back. I'm going to cancel this for now. But if we have time, we'll come back to um, uh, SQL map later on. Let's see if I can remember the. Um... So let's do netcats. Uh, what's the syntax for netcat again? It's been so long. Uh, do you just do the IP address 4444 uh, or like 443 and then dash e bin bash, if I recall? And then we need netcat and OVP 4444. No, it's probably not the version of netcat. Oh, actually, maybe we need. Uh, Maybe we need full path. Oh, I'm going to select it from the drop down and then let's get rid of the space just in case. No, we didn't get a shell, unfortunately. OK, that's fine. We'll just try a, um, a reverse shell. So let's try this one. And our IP address is 10.10.100.149. It could also be the port. It's not really best practice to try and connect on 4444, but you know, I'm banking on it, it trying to work. OK, that didn't work. So let's try this one. Oh my, 101149. Oh wait, is that that's the wrong IP address? I need to be on the ton zero IP address. Ah, oh, it's really annoying that the, my virtual network is also 1010. That's super super irritating. And I bet I'm gonna look at the chat now, and everybody's gonna be like, "Dumbass, you're using the wrong IP address." Nobody nobody's picked up on it. Okay, we're good. We're fine. Every, nothing to see here. Ooh, no luck with these reverse shells. Um, hmm. Let's try this one. And then we want four 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 ten ten fourteen eleven. Yes, okay. The fact that it hung is is quite nice and we saw a little change in our um, on our page as well. So Python shells for the win. That's what we like to see. Yeah, I'm using Parrot. I thought we'd just like, you know, um, change things up a little bit. And it's been years since I used Parrot, and I kind of wanted to see what it's looking like now. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, I'm always typing in wrong IP addresses. Um, so let's do Python dash C import pty pty dot spawn bin bash. And ooh. Importy. Okay. Python dash C import PTY PTY that spawn bin bash. It's a good thing I'm not like a flight controller or something. Otherwise it'd end up like breaking bad. That would be uh, that would be pretty terrible. Alright, so we have this uh cat config.php and we have the um credentials here. So let's take a look in the database first. So mysql dash u admin and then dash p. And then we'll pass in this and then show databases. Use admin, show tables, and select star from users. There's only one table in there. OK, and we just get this admin. Is that the same password as this? 
no, KEJ, and this is 4-5. So this looks like MD5. Maybe a weird MD5. So let's just go ashes.com. See if we can crack this quickly. One three two seven six six three seven zero four. Okay, let's um, let's just add that to our notes. So I'm just gonna open this here. Uh, oops. Let's just put creds from DB like this. Oops. And then we can exit out of here. Now, what do we want to do? What's our next nice steps? Um, in potty. I'm potty. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of my normal typos. Actually, I. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, the chat changed. This I type this more often than not. Like when I'm typing imports, I always type in potty. So, yeah. So why did the other shells not, not work? So it depends, one, on like the version of the operating system, um, but it also, because the way we're delivering it um, through this web application, um, things are going to happen. So like maybe some special characters you're all encoded, some of them are like filtered, um, some of them are, I don't know, it's just like, maybe I, one day somebody should definitely do a deep dive into like as and why different, um, different reverse shells do and don't work. The bash ones, I honestly, I don't have a deep knowledge of bash to be able to tell you why certain bash shells would work or, or wouldn't work. Um, but yeah, I think that's basically, it all depends how you're, how you're delivering it. And often like if you're in like a web application and you're inside something like exec, um, certain things will work, certain things won't work, but you've got to kind of think like, you're using exec to execute bash, but that exec is in the context of PHP, and that PHP is then being run by the system, you're going down quite a few layers of abstraction. So like, you know, things can happen on, on the way on the way up as uh, as the code is passed. So maybe a low level software engineer will be able to give you some really good insights, but that's kind of like my rudimentary understanding. Um, no, I'm too lazy to do this. Like, I, I am a web person. I, I don't really like, you know, once, once I get a shell, I'm like, yeah, that's my job done. And, um, I don't really see the benefit most of the time. Like I see people doing it and then sometimes it works really nicely, but at least 50% of the time they screw up their whole shell and then they have to do loads of other crazy stuff. And I'm like, well, I don't need, I don't need a fully functioning shell anyway. The putty shell, um, is, is perfectly good for me because I can run things like sudo and, you know, we're all good. So sometimes you have to do like a little bit of work around if you want to like vim something or whatever, but honestly, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's, uh, it's all good. It, everybody has their preferences, right? So, um, so in this case, we're not, um, we're not importing bin bash, we're running bin bash inside of the putty pseudo shell. So it like creates basically a uh, environment for us and then runs bin bash in that environment, if that makes sense. And if we exit out of here, it'll drop back into our previous shell. So yeah, Pwncat's quite good. This is pretty nice. Um, all right, so let's come into here and just have a quick look around. Um, I just want to see what's in the home folder. We see this new list user. Ooh, cache composer. And then we have, um, yeah, user.txt, even though we're only dub, dub, dub data. So that's our first flag. And then, let's just have a quick look in the profile. Nothing too interesting in there. Looking ops. All right. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to grab um, linpeas and give that a run and see see what that finds. I wonder if linpeas is already on this system. Oh. I can't locate? What? 
What? I'm just gonna download it. It's a bit easier. Um, wait, where's the actual script? Is it? In, it's not in the images. No, it's the PNG builder. What is all of this? I just want like the shell script. Is there a releases for it? This is what I want. Limpies.sh. Thank you. Things are getting complicated these days. I've been out of the hack the box game for a little bit of uh, a little bit of time. So uh, yeah. All right. So let's just do. Wait. Why did it pull down index.html? Why didn't you get me the file? Oh, come on. All right. Let's just copy this. Then then sh. Oops. Yeah, fair. Bad things might happen. Things, terrible things might happen. We'll see. Um, OK, so let's grab this IP. And then let's do Python 3-m HTTP server. And let's just serve this on 8080. And then we'll close this. Come back here, wget. Uh, HTTP, oh, we don't even need HTTP. We'll just do this. Oh, no. This is why you need a stable shell. I thought we'd copied my IP address. Yeah, I would use find, but find takes forever. All right, I'm going to have to kill this and then catch another shell. Maybe I've crushed the box. All right, let's just close this. And then let's come back into admin chronos.htb. This is quite normal. This is why you need a stable shell. Yeah. Yeah, true. Although I think I've actually just crushed the box. So I'm not sure it's uh, to do with the, with the shell so much. Yeah, the box has definitely died. All right, let me let me reset this one quickly. It's not that it's not stable. It's nothing to do with that. It's just to do with uh, your terminal setup having like the same columns and things as the target, right? I, yeah, persistence would be useful. Probably on a real engagement, I'd definitely be more careful and might consider putting some persistence in if I couldn't get the shell for a second time. But yeah, it's a hack the box machine. It's okay. The, uh, the, the random issues never stop. There's always little things. Things always go wrong.
Yeah, sometimes on uh, on shared boxes, uh, like other people will crash the box or, or they'll change some configuration, which is a bit annoying. So it's always nice to have a private machine if you can if you can get one. I'm going to switch my fan on quickly. If the fan is super loud in the background, let me know and I'll just switch it off again. I have this big industrial fan under my desk that uh, is nice and cool because this room gets really hot. All right, we're back. Okay, so let's do admin for one equals one dash dash space dash. And then let's see if we can find our payload that we used. It's not here. Where is it? All right, let's just come back to payloads, all the things. Ah, it's this one. Copy this. Paste it in here. I'll make this a bit bigger for you guys to see. And then I think we're 10, 10, 14, 11. And then 4, 4, 4, 4. Before we do that, oh, we're already listening. OK. Excuse. Are we 10, 10, 11? This hung, but we didn't catch anything. Oh, no, this is 10, 10. 14.11. Okay, I type with the IP. Let's come back. Oh, it's going to hang for a little bit. It's probably trying to connect, but the fact that it hasn't connected, it probably needs to time out because it's, I don't know, probably a single threaded application. So we'll see what happens. Um, what do I think of the CBBH content? I think it's really good. Yeah, I've started going through it um, and I'll get around to the exam at some point. But, um, but yeah, it's awesome for sure. Yeah, I listen to all sorts of music when I'm doing like dev work or pen tests or whatever. Um, yeah, everything really. So, I mean, sometimes it's like turned down quite low, so it's like not too distracting. But, um, but yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, everybody's telling me I've got the wrong IP. Let's see if this, we'll have to wait for it to come back. It's a very janky web application. You see how I start blaming the web application for, for my mistake. I just need the connection to time out and then we should be okay. All right, there we go. Okay, we're good again. So let me paste this. I'm going to double check now before I do all gung ho. So 10, 10, 14, 11, is that my IP address? Yes, it is. All right, we're back. Okay. Uh, Python dash C imports PTY, PTY dot spawn, bin bash. Like this. I'm typing carefully now instead of just, uh, you know. Okay, so let's host this. Come down into temp and then wget 10, 10, 14, 11. And then .sh. Oh, connection refused. That's because we need to run on port 8080. So let's go 8080, limpies.sh, chmod plus x. This is going to be like a troll version of limpies, and it's just going to come up with some random thing. That oh, looks like it's working. OK, cool. All right, so we finally got our little friend running.
So these two aren't really comparable because CBBH is like a web hacking certification. PMPT is like a network penetration testing certification. So they're two different fields. And I know that obviously a lot of pen testers work across both fields, but um, but in my opinion, they're kind of like two different two different skills, two different certifications. So. No worries, Kali. Definitely get some sleep. Good night. Thanks for tuning in. I thought IF config wasn't on this machine anymore. Like you can't do IF config anymore. Oh, you can. Maybe on Kali. I thought they removed it, but I thought IPA was the new, um, the new new version. Depends on the. Uh, well, I suppose it depends on your distribution, but uh, but all good. All right, so this is done, and my music disappeared. So let me um, let me find something to put on quickly. All right. And I'm just gonna quickly skim through this and see what jumps out. We already have those credentials. Grab this. Oh no, my terminal history doesn't go that far back. What? All right, let me change this. Why? That's terrible. By default, that's not even that far. How do I change the terminal history in here? <laughs> I mean, I suppose what we could do is let's do uh, let's do something else. Let me see if I can find my old notebook. And we'll just do some manual checks. So we can't do sudo, but let's do sewage. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. So, ping. These are all of the um, binaries that have the sewage bit set. So most of them look pretty normal to me but you can also like cross-reference this list against gtfo bins so you can check them in here to see like you know what uh if it has the suit bit set for example how you can prove ask off of that uh there's an exploit for old pk exec but it's probably not that Okay, um, what else can we check? Oh yeah, we can do crontab-l. Ah, no crontab. Um, we can cats. This looks kind of interesting. So hold on, let me turn this music down a little bit. So here we have, uh, what is this running every minute? I always forget how to read this this crazy this crazy formatting. Uh, so we have PHP slash var dub 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 Laravel artisan schedule run, and then the uh, outputs being you know thrown into dev null. So and the errors are going to end one. Um, this looks suspicious. Let's, um, we could just run it, couldn't we? Should we do, should we live dangerously? <laughs> no scheduled, com uh, scheduled commands are ready to run. Okay, so I suspect if we can basically, um, create uh, scheduled commands within Laravel, which I, I think you can do, I've, I've done it not for a long time, um, then this is being executed as root, so hopefully we can just um, uh, get a scheduled command to run. So let's check this out. 
this uh, for dub 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 Laravel artisan. So cats this. What is this file? In fact, actually, I didn't even think we need to create a schedule task. We can probably just poison this file instead. So let me sh do a quick Google because I'm not a Laravel expert. But I reckon we can probably just throw our payload into, into that file. Uh, scheduling artisan commands. Oh, yeah, so this is cool. In addition to scheduling closures, you must also schedule artisan commands and system commands. Sounds very dangerous. Uh, for example, you may use the command method. Do, 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 do. When scheduling, use the command's class name. You may pass an array of additional command line arguments. So if, yeah, that makes sense. And then it's invoked, so. Ah, and then you've got this, how often you want to send it as well. Uh, okay, so you go like every five minutes. Interesting. Okay. Let's try poisoning this file first, I think, and then uh, and then we'll we'll do we'll do the rest later. Um, what's the best way to do this? Hmm. I'm trying to think of what the best way. Maybe we can just add a um, sewage bit on bin bash. Do we have like mouse pad or something on here? Oh, this would be so much easier on Kali or my Debian machine. Vim, what is this? Pluma. Oh, that's fancy. Ah, here we go. Okay. So what I'm thinking is grabbing this. All right, and I'm just putting it in here so I can easily like think about it and edits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so we can just do something like exec, um, chmod plus s bin bash. And I think that will poison this file. Will this work? Do I need to actually have a scheduled command for it to execute? Maybe, maybe not. Not sure. Let's try it. Um, Okay, let's just save this and where is this file again? So that's W get ten ten fourteen eleven artisan and write this to oh, 8018. I always forget the port numbers. Where did I just save this to? There we go. And then we'll grab the right one. So let's just grab this. Okay.
Ooh, what just happened there? Oh, I didn't need, yeah, you can't just output like that from wget, so I think we'll just do dash o like this. And then, I forgot about that. My bad. All right, so we should have the poison file on here now. So, yeah, chmod plus s bin bash. So what's the time at the moment? So this should execute at some point. So let's give it a couple of minutes and see what happens. So I probably didn't explain myself very well there. I was kind of like thinking and also like trying to figure out this solution. Sometimes I forget I'm on live stream. Yeah, you can find the recording on um, on uh, YouTube if you come to, hold up. Uh, oh, I don't have YouTube open. But if you go to like the Cyber Mentor on YouTube and just click on the live tab, all of the recordings are in there. So all good. Why Google when I use ChatGPT? Uh, yeah, I mean, ChatGPT is pretty good. Uh, it does hallucinate quite a lot, though. So not everything it spits out is, is true. But I mean, yeah, I use it from time to time. It's quite a useful tool. Where's my uh, terminal gone? Yes, I think. Hey, and we're Roots. Nice, 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 nice. Um, I forgot to add the shebang. No, I didn't. I didn't need it because um, basically, when this is being called, if you look at the um, cat, uh, it's a it's a good shout because often I do miss out things like that. Um, when it's being called, it's being called with PHP. So it's going to use the PHP binary to execute this file. So you don't actually need the shebang in this case. It's like if you have a file like test, if you run it with like Python explicitly, it's going to run in Python, even if it has like a shebang or not. So, um, so it should be all good. Um, but yeah, obviously, usually it's um, if it's just a standalone binary, then then definitely worth um, worth getting the shebang in there. So, all right. So let's see if we can. Whoops, cats. Oops. Yeah, and there's our root flag. Nice, that's it. Whew, you know, it's been, I don't know, it's been years since I did this box. So, I mean, fair point, I've been, I have done this box before a long time in the past, but it's been, it has been years and years ago. So um, it's nice to revisit it because it was definitely um, one of my favorite boxes uh, for, for quite a long time. And uh, I've not entirely, I'd totally forgotten about the Privesk. I didn't realize it was a Laravel issue. And in fact, I might have solved it a completely different way a long time ago, but um, but I like the web stuff. It's always fun. It's kind of straightforward, the web, I suppose. I'd definitely say this is like more on the easy side rather than the medium, but still a uh, fun box uh, nonetheless, so. All right, so that's it. Um, that's all I have planned for today. So I have a little bit more time for, for a little bit more Q&A. Um, I do see a couple of questions. So yeah, we had to um, stop streaming on Twitch because um, Twitch isn't letting us multi-stream. And I think they started like fining people who like multi-stream. So rip Twitch, unfortunately, ever since, um, uh, you know, it got taken over, it's kind of been a bit of like a, a railroad ride. So yeah. Yeah, I can show you my solution again, uh, for sure. So basically, uh, if we come to, I don't know why I keep putting a slash like cat etc cron tab, you can see that this this is being executed as root. So it's going PHP and then it's executing this file, artisan, and it's passing in this schedule run. So what I suspect is the intended way is to create a scheduled command. And then when this runs, that scheduled command gets passed in through Laravel. But actually, since we can write to this file, which is being um, uh, uh, see with the owner dub 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 data, and we can write to it. Although we probably weren't the owner before. This is because I overwrote the file. But we had write privileges, whatever. Because this is being executed by PHP, all I did was 
um, added this exec chmod dash s bin bash. And this is adding the sewered bit to the bin bash binary. And then to execute that, you just go bin bash um, with the privilege flag, and then it, it pops you a, a root shell. So this is a really, um, this is quite an easy way to get a root shell if you have um, uh, like um, privileged command uh, code execution, or if you're waiting for something, you know, because I could like pop another reverse shell, but we'd be here like for another half an hour troubleshooting the reverse shell. <laughs> Especially with my with my janky, not fully TTY terminal. So um, so yeah, it's all all good. Um, so I hope that makes sense. I hope my little little walkthrough makes sense. Um, how can people contact? Um, I mean, I hang out on the TCM Discord, so you can obviously join us over on the Discord anytime. Um, and uh, you know, I kind of keep a keep an eye on it. I'm not the most chatty person in the world. I'm I'm a lurker. I've, I don't think I've ever posted anything on Reddit, but I've spent so much time on Reddit, so it's definitely like story of my life. Um, otherwise, you can catch me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's probably the best. Um, uh... Oh yeah, is that is that a hint? Cron OS, as in like the Cron job. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. That's a, that's a fair point. Yeah, so this is a great question. Right, so in my day-to-day, -day, my actual like job life, um, I use Debian uh, because I basically only do web stuff and I have my own machine set up exactly how I like it. Um, and uh, I just have the tools that I want. So it's, it's much like, it's kind of like quite lightweight and, and quite fast. Um, for streaming, most of the time I use Kali, but today I just thought we'd have some fun and, and see see what Parrot has on offer. So that's that's basically it, you know, that's the reason. And uh, yeah, I'm still, it's been a few years since I used Parrot and I just thought it'd be, be a bit of fun, something different, so. Oh, what are some? Uh, yeah, it, this depends on the services. This is a really good question. Um, usually with web applications, uh, I would just put in like, if you had like a PHP application on the 404 page, I'd just have like a hidden file upload or something like this. And then that's a really easy way to get back in. Um, I don't really like adding users to boxes because that's what people check. Um, but obviously, if you can steal credentials and then you can just SSH back in, then then you're all good. Um, but yeah, as a low privileged user, usually you can create things like web files or you can leave stuff um, on the box uh, that you can then access in the future, whether it's like a shell or whether it's some some piece of functionality. Obviously, if you're root, you can do whatever you want. You can you know, do all sorts of crazy things. I was at a conference last year, actually, in Dublin, and um, they were talking about this malware that basically um, used the SSH password field to issue commands. And it's really, really difficult to detect because that's never logged anywhere. Obviously, the SSH password when you log in isn't isn't there. So um, uh, to issue server commands, what they do is, yeah, they just log in to SSH and then and then in the command is the password. Some really hard to find. Um, persistence right there, which is quite cool. Uh, but you can be quite creative with persistence, I think. Um, do I have a roadmap to study? Yes, there's some YouTube videos. So let me come on to uh, here. If you're interested in like network penetration testing, definitely check out Heath's video. If you're interested in more like web app stuff, then, then I've got a video on that. So um, uh, Cyber Mentor 2023. Roadmap. Let's see, it might come up with both of them. Oh yeah, so this one, how to be an ethical hacker in 2023. And then, God, that jumper is awful. Look at that yellow. Not that yellow is a bad color. It just makes me look weird. Um, there is a, there's the same one, but for web app pen testing um, as well on the Cyber Mentor channel. So you can go on there and, um, and, uh, and check them out. Try and find it. Yeah, there's the web app one. So it just says 2023 in the um, in the uh, in the title. Uh, if you want to go to the TCM Discord, you just go to discord.gg forward slash TCM. Oh, dig cord. There we go. 
So, and hey presto, yeah, you get the TCM, the Cyber Mentor. So discordgg TCM, and you can uh, you can join. All right, a couple more questions, and then we'll uh, we'll finish up the stream. So. This is a good question. How does web development help you in pen testing? Um, so me personally, obviously, I pen test a lot of web applications. So um, it helps in terms of troubleshooting, understanding you know, what the behavior of the application is like. It's easier to learn and understand how exploits and exploit chains would work. Um, I think just all around understanding, if you, if you can build applications and understand how they work fundamentally, you're going to be much more, uh, much better equipped to to attack and exploit them. Um, it's kind of like, you know, if you're a mechanic, right, and you learn how to replace a battery on a car, well, if you learn actually how an engine works, you're going to be in a much better place to be able to troubleshoot the engine, figure out what the issue is, and not just, oh, we need to maybe change the battery, or there's this symptom, I just need to change this pipe, because sometimes the symptoms will be, you know, um, you have different symptoms for like different, um, well, the same symptoms, but for different issues. So it's kind of the same, I think. But I think it definitely helps. You don't have to like be some crazy code guru, but learning a bit of development definitely helps. Um, oops, let me um, let me switch back to the, uh, the full cam and see. Oh, okay. This is quite a long question. Let's see. So, how might my ability or inability to answer questions regarding pen testing, code review, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, impact the employer's decision to hire, despite me to demonstrating proficiency in my applications pen testing as a fresher? Um, so, in this case, I mean, pen testing isn't just like hard technical skills, you need a whole set of skills, which means talking to clients, assessing risk. Um, you know, it's kind of like imagine being able to fly a jumbo jet, but you can't take any passengers. It's like, what's the point, right? So the whole point, like the the value that we have, is is you know being able to communicate well with organizations and things like this. So so all I'd say is just you know practice. Um, there's a there's a good technique called um, damn I can't remember what it is. It's like oh it's named after some scientist I think where basically you take a concept and you try and explain it to yourself in the mirror and if you can't explain it to yourself in a like a clear and easy way then you need to like go back and revisit your understanding of that subject if that makes sense. Um, is that the Feisman technique or something? I can't remember exactly. But don't neglect your soft skills and, and you'll get there. It comes with practice, um, you know. Yes, we should do this. I have streamed some King of the Hill before. So, um, and actually I was planning to do something like this at some point um, with like viewers and stuff. But um, the problem is, <laughs> is uh especially with my with some old friends and colleagues uh when we did it we we would just go crazy and we'd keep crashing the machines so <laughs> so no no holds back uh we, none of us hold back so um so all good all right um two more questions and then we'll we'll finish up for today so what can i do to be a professional penetration testing um I mean, get one or two certifications. Um, obviously, you know, study and make sure you've got the right skills, and uh, you know, maybe think about having some side projects. So you've got something interesting to talk about in interviews. But you know, just start applying for jobs once you've got one or two sets done, and then you should be should be all good. Oh, am I able to show again? Yeah, let me um, let me put it into. Did I have like a? Wait, applications. Oh no, let me come into the terminal. The address is. Oh, what the hell? There we go. Oh, that's huge. Okay, so if you go to discord.gg forward slash TCM, like this, and that will give you the uh, the link to uh, to the Discord. 
Oh, I did I did share the link for the um, wiki, but let me share it once more. So like I say, it's still a work in progress and there's still a lot more to come. Um, and probably after another month, maybe I'll op be opening it up for contributions. So um, if you all have some stuff that you want me to put on there, you know, um, maybe send it over. And uh, or if you have a particular area, like maybe you're like really good at click jacking and you you're like, oh, there's a few things that we could add to the click jacking. Um, checklist that would be awesome i'd love that so so yeah um and i'm i'm working hard on some code review stuff as well so that should be should be fun you'll you you will see a bunch of pages though like i think like the architecture page like i i just haven't gone around to writing about like different architectures and their impact on security yet but some of the pages are pretty um fleshed out so all right, um, that's it, I think, and we're we're good to go. So, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, I hope you all had a had a good time. Maybe we'll do some more parrots next week, or maybe we'll switch back to Cali. We'll see. Um, always appreciate you seeing. Uh, always appreciate seeing all of you in the chat. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>